first time that people actually found out the Zika virus was in 1947. It's in Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Uganda, it happened there because there was some very active arbovirus research program at the UVRI, which is actually the Uganda Virus Research Institute. And they were very specialized on arbovirus. One way they were actually looking for arbovirus was to go to some forests. And in those forests, they would put monkeys as sentinel, meaning they put monkey in the cage, and they would sample the monkey over time. And when they did that, at some point, they took samples, and those samples, they used them to try to isolate virus. And that's how they isolate a virus that was new, that was Zika. And they named it Zika because that area, that forest, is called Zika. And a few years after, they found it also in mosquito, the same virus, in 1948. And so they have a clue that this virus may be transmitted by mosquitoes. Actually, when you have a virus that is isolated, you want to try first to, to understand which family it belongs, which genus it belongs. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, they found that the virus of Zika belonged to the same family as yellow fever, and they belong to the same genus. Now, when you get virus also to know what is the impact in human health, for instance, or in animal health, usually you would try actually for animal to do some experimentations, and for human, when you isolate it from someone that presents some kind of clinical sign, you can have an idea. So far, Zika has been associated to most of the mild disease where you have some fever, you can have some rash, you can have what is called a flu-like uh, disease, meaning that you have some myalgia, meaning that you have some muscles ache, you have aches in the joint, you have some kind of joint pain, and uh, more and more you may have people having some conjunctivitis and this was generally the sort of disease which is associated with Zika and this disease actually is supposed to be mild and after a few days you as a disease itself disappears so you feel better no more fever and uh, what you need to understand for some arbovirus in general most of the arbovirus and Zika is not an exception would actually have uh, uh, most of the case that would not present symptom, meaning that the people won't feel sick, you won't even know that they, they have a virus in their blood. And this is the asymptomatic. And usually you have a few part of this, people that are infected, that show some kind of symptom. The most common that we see for Zika is the fever, the rash, and the, uh, the muscles ache, the um, joint ache and pains and this may vary a little bit but all in, in, in general that's what you would see concerning the Zika virus. Mm -hmm. I just want to mention something very important is that many people when they're infected they don't know that they're infected and by having that they may go around and they may actually move and this mobility of human is very important because that's how the virus spread. You have the virus in your blood and you move around and where you go some mosquito can pick it and spread the virus. This is in general what I can say from the clinical presentations and uh, this, is, this is critically important to understand that the people that are not sick play a major role on this disease and how it is spread. Uh, Zika actually we start having case around the 50s and uh, during that period, it appeared in several countries. Uh, Nigeria, we have case in Senegal, and we have case in Cote d'Ivoire. And what is important to understand in that is that up to 2007, the number of cases of Zika that has been described were very small. Either people that came into the middle of the circulation from the forest or when Zika came into the population, or some people that was infected in the laboratory where they do the work. So these are mostly the source that was existing, and those source would show that the virus was not a very severe presentation. So now what is important to understand is that Zika is, uh, has changed really in 2007, when there was an outbreak in Yap in Micronesia, where they start having several cases. This outbreak at the beginning was believed to be a dengue outbreak. 
And uh, when people start characterizing people from CDC and with the, the government of uh, YAP states, they realize that was a Zika outbreak that happened with several number of cases. And uh, before that, there was some Zika in Asia, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in different places. But we don't have that much case of human case described at the same time. And we consider that this epidemic in 2007 has been a major, actually, uh, breakthrough in this disease. Now, from 2007, it happened that the next major issue was in 2013, when it actually reached French Polynesia, where they have several cases at a level which was never reached before, meaning that they turned out to talk about 10,000 cases, which was very unusual for Zika.